Hi guys, in the last session um, that we delivered a couple of weeks ago, uh, we covered idle mode mobility. But uh, to actually understand the overall mobility strategy and the mobility overview, we need to know both the connected mode and the idle mode. So today we will cover the connected mode mobility strategy and we will also understand how connected mode and idle mode mobilities they work together and how they should work together so to cover that we will go through handovers which is connected mode mobility then we'll also talk about reselections which is the idle mode mobility that we already discussed about in the last session as well and we will talk about redirections that's also part of connected mode mobility so we need to understand the differences between these three and then we will also go through some examples and tips and tricks so that uh, you understand what is a good mobility strategy and how you can devise your own mobility strategies. So let's start that. So over here, um, as, as in the last example, uh, the green ones, they uh, are from one rat. The blue one is the other rat. So you can say that if the green one is 5G, then these are all 5G cells and this is an LTE cell. Or if you want to do an LTE 3G mobility, then you can consider the green ones as LTE cells and the, the, the blue one can be a 3G cell. So uh, th the idea behind the mobility strategy is similar. So that's why I wanted to make it more technology agnostic. So you can apply it to whatever technology you're working on. So let's say over here we have frequency one. This is frequency two. They have same um, idle mode priority and then we have a frequency 3 these two cells are on the same frequency frequency 3 but their priority is 6 which is lower than these two cells now in connected mode the priority doesn't really matter uh, in most of the connected mode strategies we use coverage based the priorities come into play mostly in the idle mode so uh, i'm just keeping uh, the example similar as the last session so that we understand um, on basis on the same example so it will be great if you have already gone through the previous session it will be easier for you to understand this now when we move from one cell to another because they are different frequency so we need to do an inter frequency handover now for an inter frequency handover we need to have two thresholds just like in idle mode so we had two thresholds for that now why do we need two thresholds because the frequencies can be having different coverages right so you need to if you are bad in this frequency there can there's no guarantee that the other frequency will be good right so you need to f be bad in this one and good in this one only then do you do an inter frequency handover so for instance over here we have an a2 threshold so the rsrp of this ue on this cell should be below or worse than a2 threshold while the rsrp on the target cell should be higher than or better than a5 threshold so an example can be that if my a2 is minus 100 rsrp so if i am below minus 100 let's say minus 101 minus 102 then the target rsrp a5 should be a value that is higher than this value so let's say minus 96 so if the ue over here is at minus 101 and it finds out that this cell has an rsrp of uh, minus 95 so then it will trigger an interfrequency handover so that is one thing uh, that we need to understand about interfrequency handovers similarly if the user moves from here and goes here then this one will also trigger an a2 because user is now in bad coverage on frequency 2 cell so if it is below minus 100 and it finds out another cell which is let's say on frequency 3 which is higher than minus 96 if we assume that a2 is minus 100 and a5 is minus 96 again then it will move from here to here right so now if it, it starts moving from here toward this direction then from between these two cells because they are the same frequency we don't need two thresholds we can do simply uh, a move from here to here uh, based on a3 so a3 just makes um, it is more of a, a difference a delta in rsrp so if this cell gets better in coverage than this cell by the value equal to a3 we will do an intra frequency handover from here to here now let's say if a3 is 2 db then if my rsrp on this cell frequency 3 cell 2 it goes down to minus 100 and this cell is at minus 98 i will do a handover 
So that is how it is. Now uh, all these thresholds they come with uh, a hysteresis as well. So uh, time assuming here is that let's say if hysteresis is zero, then all these values will be the effective values. If you have a hysteresis, let's say if A3 is 2 dB and hysteresis is also 2 dB, then if I am here at minus 100, then this cell should be A3 plus hysteresis better. That is 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 dB better. That means if I am at minus 100 here and this cell is above minus 96, then I will do a handover. So that is how it will work out. Now if I move away from here and I move, reach here, then we can see that from this rat, there is no more cell that is in, in coverage. So what will happen is that we will do an inter-rat handover. The inter-rat handover is also similar to inter-frequency, but the thresholds will have to be different. We don't want to trigger an inter-rat handover before an inter-frequency handover, right? So it can be an A2 IRAT. If the user is over here, the RSRP is, is uh, below or worse than A2 IRAT, while the target RSRP is higher than B2 IRAT, then we can do a inter-rat handover. So if it is, let's say, 5G to 4G, then the RSRP of 5G is, is worse than minus 106 if this is my A2 IRAT and we can say that the target B2 IRAT is minus 102. So if RSRP of 5G is below minus 106, while this LTE cell is above minus 102, I can do a inter-rat handover. If it is a LTE to 3G one, then let's say if my LTE A2 IRAT is minus 106, then if LTE RSRP is below minus 106 and the target 3G which will be RSCP now, if RSCP target is less than minus 103. So if RSCP is above minus 103, I will move from here to here. If the target is ECNO, then we can say that the target will be uh, an ECNO threshold. It can be, let's say, minus 16 dB. Uh, so if it is above minus 16, we can do the handover. So that is how it works. Generally, uh, in, in simple words, uh, a handover scenario is done in connected mode. So movement from here to here in connected mode is a handover. In this scenario, this cell and this cell, they are neighbors. They know, both of them knows that, both of, the, both of them know that the UE is moving from here to here. So this cell will already have resources reserved for the UE. So both the cells, both the cells know that the user will move from here to here. In reader, in connected, in uh, reselection, in idle mode mobility, uh, both the cells don't know because the UE is in idle mode, it has no connection, active connection with the cell. The cell does not even know that the UE exists here. So the UE makes a decision by itself and it moves from here to here. So in connected mode, both the cells know that the UE needs to move from here to here. In idle mode, none of the cells know about it. The UE decides and it moves by itself. So that is one of the primary differences when we talk about connected mode and idle mode mobility. Now, once the UE is here and it needs to, uh, it moves here, so let's say in this cell, it will happen that uh, it is back in the coverage of this higher uh, priority rat. So we can move back with a, let's say a redirection. So if it finds out that this cell is now better than a certain threshold, it can go back with the IRAT redirection. Similarly, if over here it finds out that this frequency two cell is better than a threshold, it can go back there with an with an IRAT uh, re redirection. Now, what is the difference between uh, redirection, reselection, and, and handover? So in handovers, as I said, both the cells know that the UE is moving. In reselection, none of the cells know. In redirection, only one cell knows that the UE is moving from here to there. This target cell will not know. This cell, the source cell, will know that uh, the UE is now in a condition where it is, uh, it can go to the higher priority RAT or higher priority frequency. So a source cell will send an RRC release message sending the UE to the higher priority frequency. The UE will go there and initiate a new connection. So the, this cell will not actually know that a UE is coming. For this cell, it is a new connection. But in handovers, this cell will already reserve resources on this cell and then send an RRC reconfiguration handover command to the UE. And the UE will go to this cell and it will send the RRC reconfiguration complete to this cell over here, telling this cell that I am here now as promised by this cell. So uh, the movement of handover in connected mode, both the cells know. 
in the redirection only the source cell knows the target cell might not know in reselection none of the cells know the ue only the ue knows and it moves by itself so let's take some examples now so if i have an a2 of minus 106 over here then the a5 should be higher than this so the user is below 106 minus 106 and it finds out this cell is above minus 104 so it moves from a, a bad to good radio condition if a5 is let's say minus 108 then the user is moving from 106 to minus 108 so user is moving from bad to worse radio conditions so that is not a a, a good design a good design would be that this one is uh, is lower than this one similarly over here we have a2 and a5 similar values now uh, when we reach here we reach the irat handover right so we can say that this a2 irat should be lower than this a2 interfrequency so that uh, we trigger interfrequency first and if there is no interfrequency neighbor then we trigger the irat handover now another important thing over here would be how the reselection or the idle mode mobility strategies should work with the connected mode mobility strategies so let's say if i put my irat reselection threshold which is let's say threshold serve low at minus 112 and threshold x low at minus 106 so the user from here in idle mode if it is at minus 112 it will move from here to over here if this cell is above minus 106 it looks fine but there is a problem with this strategy because thresh serving low is now lower than a2 irat so if a user is in idle mode at minus 111 it will stay here but the moment it moves to connected mode this cell will say that it is below a2 irat so it will trigger a handover so if i change this threshold this value to let's say minus 108 then what will happen is that all the the users in idle mode will already move at minus 108 minus 109 from this cell to the other rat and this will reduce my handover signaling because i have already moved the users in idle mode from the from this rat to this rat so the a2 which is lower than this value will not be triggered and in this way what will happen is that my handover signaling will reduce handover signaling causes uh, lots of uh, user experience degradation because whenever we are doing interfrequency or inter rat handovers we are going into compressed mode that means we go into a guard period to search the other frequency so when we do that our throughput uh, is impacted as well and also when we have lots of irat handovers uh, there are chances of more drops so you can also uh, improve your drop rate if you have this kind of strategy where the reselection comes into play before uh, the handover so uh, it is a good idea to keep your reselection or idle mode strategy threshold uh, to trigger first before your handover is triggered that reduces your signaling overheads now another option from uh, coming back from here to here uh, we have irat reselection as well based on thresh xi because this is higher priority than this one so the user will move back over here now, if my thresh xi is minus 112 what will happen is that this one will send the user back here at minus if this rsrp is above minus 112 but since we know that a2 is minus 110 so it will trigger a handover back so, so it will trigger a, a ping pong between these two scenarios which is will be very bad for the kpi and also for the user experience so a, a, a better value would be that we don't use this one we use this value for instance so this value uh, minus 100, 106 if we use this value it should be higher than both a2 irat and the threshold threshold serve low for irat this value should be higher than both of them so then we will not have a ping pong so these are just some of the examples that you can do you can play with overall uh, we need to ensure that our irat uh, our interfrequency uh, connected mode and idle mode strategies they are uh, consistent with each other they should not be uh, causing a ping pong or they should not be causing uh, a, tra a traffic mismanagement so um, if uh, i hope that this one gives you an idea about how the mobility strategies pan out and uh, if you like it please do let me know um, and do let me know if you want me to cover something else as well do subscribe do share thank you so much have a nice day